The International Space Station marks 10 years of continuous human habitation and the last scheduled space shuttle visit late this year. The flight crew will mark those milestones while doing the work that the station was built for. I think one of the most important tasks that our crew members will have is promoting scientific research in space, a uh, human space flight program, because I believe that uh, humanity as a whole should strive to achieve loftier goals and try to expand the horizons. To support human exploration, the station's research agenda focuses on the human explorers, learning how best to prepare those people, physically and psychologically, for a smooth adaptation to the microgravity environment to begin their work. And to optimize the recovery and adaptation of human body after landing. We would like for people to not spend too much time on trying to recover their strength after a space flight. While the Expedition 24 crew members are the subjects for some station research, they're also operators for dozens of experiments in a range of scientific disciplines. Those investigations use facilities in the station's several laboratory modules and outside the vehicle as well. We've got experiments that go outdoors um, on all points of the station, it seems, that are trying to monitor, measure, observe the effects of uh, the space environment, uh, the temperature extremes, the, the pressure extreme, the, uh, the particles, uh, the, um, uh, the long duration exposure, and, and take that information and, and how can we build better structures in space um, and uh, on the moon and Mars. To maintain this orbiting laboratory, Dyson and flight engineer Doug Wheelock conduct a spacewalk in July to install a power and data grapple fixture on the Zarya module to serve as a new operating base for Canadarm2. So we can increase the essentially the working envelope of the uh, of our robotic structures on board and that's our primary task on that EVA and uh, there's also some routing of cables and, uh, and power cables and video cables and data cables and things that take up the, uh, the majority of that, of that EVA. A second EVA is planned for later in the month for Kornienko and Fyodor Yurchikin to finish external outfitting of the new Rasviet module so future dockings can be completed in the automatic mode. We should activate it MRM-1. It's, uh, we connect MRM-1 with power cable, data cable from SM, from FGB to MRM-1. It's very, um, very difficult, very interesting QVA. Wheelock becomes Expedition 25 commander when Skvortsov, Dyson and Kornienko return to Earth in September, just before Space Shuttle Discovery arrives. STS-133 will leave a load of supplies and the cargo module Leonardo, which will then become known as the PMM, the Permanent Multipurpose Module. It has a um, logistics module on there that we will actually be putting on the station and leaving it permanently. So essentially we're going to have a big closet on board, which is nice because there's, just like most houses, you never can have too much closet space. <laughs> Discovery will be followed by a Soyuz spacecraft delivering astronauts Scott Kelly and cosmonauts Alexander Kaleri and Oleg Skripochka to fill out Expedition 25. This crew will be on hand November 2nd to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the arrival of the first long-duration crew and the beginning of permanent human habitation of the International Space Station. Yurchikin and Skripochka are scheduled for two spacewalks in mid-November to refresh Russian experiment samples and install new hardware on the exterior of Zvezda. And then Yurchik and Wheelock and Walker will pack for their departure. That will come just days before Shuttle Endeavour is expected to arrive with more supplies and a long-anticipated scientific instrument called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which will be attached to the station's truss to search for antimatter and dark matter. I'm very excited about this. This is the physicist in me coming out. Um, is that it will be uh, probing the secrets of the universe, essentially. It's got a very large magnet on there, and so it's waiting for the rays to zoop by, and then it uses the magnet to direct the cosmic rays to the detectors, essentially, so the detectors can see 
what's coming by. The delivery of the AMS is a highlight activity during the last scheduled flight of the space shuttle program. When I was a kid, you know, we, we had the uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo era, and so my adult life has, uh, our entire nation's space program has been the space shuttle, and, and then the development later on of the, of the space station. So it's a, it's sort of a uh, very, it's going to be a very nostalgic moment, I think, to say goodbye to the shuttle. STS-134 will be the 36th shuttle mission for assembly and maintenance of the International Space Station out of the total of 134 flights in a program that defined an era of human spaceflight. If we don't have uh, the uh, shuttle, of course the uh, station maybe will be different one. But we have this station, very huge station, and thank you shuttle. I think on the one hand it's shown us how difficult space travel is just by the accidents that we've had. On the other hand, it has afforded us um, the ability to do things that we would not have been able to do without a shuttle type vehicle such as the servicing and repair of satellites, um, the Hubble Space Telescope, and as well as um, build the space station. A station outfitted and ready for another 10 years of research and exploration by the people of planet Earth.